can you see my screen okay yes okay so um so like i said i already downloaded your the raw dna for your grandfather that you sent me mm -hmm. and i'm going to use a tool called a yc clad binder uh that can be used for the autosomal test of any uh, genetic male who's tested. Uh, the caveat is that you can only use the autosomal test from Ancestry.com or MyHeritage uh, or 23andMe. You can't use the family tree DNA autosomal test um, for this. But, um, and, and with the 23andMe, it's not even really necessary because they already give you your Y DNA. So, um, and they'll give you as accurate, if not a little bit more accurate of a Y DNA Haplogroup group with your 23 and me. Um, now, before I do this for your grandfather, do you know, like what's the furthest ancestor back, patrilineal ancestor that you know for your grandfather, his father's 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 line? Um, I don't know if it's accurate, but okay. it could lead back to the Randolphs or the Jeffersons from Thomas okay. Jefferson. Okay, so that would be a Caucasian. Yes. Uh, okay, so a Caucasian line, Randolph's or Jefferson's, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. So now the YC clad finder is going to give you a half group and it's gonna tell you if it's a European or a African half group. It's not gonna tell you outright, but there are other tools that you can use to determine if it's European or African. Um, and with the Jefferson, uh, Thomas Jefferson's line, I know that that's pretty, you know, there's some documents that are out there as far as uh, why DNA testing has been done. Um, it's possible that you could even identify what his half the group was. Based, yeah, so you know, I'm on hoping that, that what you're saying can help me vet my theory. Okay, yep, it absolutely can. All right, so what I had done was I was on this page where I had just done a Google search for YC mm -hmm. Clad Finder. And obviously the first search result was the cladfinder.yseek.net. Uh, so I just click that, it takes me to this page, tells me a little bit about the tool, um, tells me I, there's you know some links that I'll be able to click on once the file is um, uploaded. And this is not uploaded in the same sense that GEDmatch is uploaded, uh, that, you know, when that you upload your file to GEDmatch and it, stored there and you can do searches mm -hmm. um this is actually just you know cached to their site because it runs it through the tool and then after 24 hours it's going to be deleted you don't even need to attach a name on the file um when you upload to this fight to this particular site um and i know that you attach the name to this file simply to make it easier for me so i appreciate that and then plus, I, yeah. I manage a lot of kids, and I try to keep them all straight. <laughs> yes, I need to upload it someplace else too. <laughs> yes, yes, that's very important. So I selected that file. Um, you got, you, I've got the little circle going saying it's uploading. Mm -hmm. I'm on my mobile hotspot, so it's probably going to take a little bit longer than it usually does. Um, the one thing that I don't, you know. The only thing I don't like about this process is that when it's done, I don't know if you just saw it or not, but when it finishes, it just puts you back to the top of the screen. It doesn't even tell you that it's finished. Mm -hmm. um, so you just got to just know that, you know, once you go back to the top of the screen that it's done and you can scroll back down here and now you see the haplogroup. So it says the most specific position on the Y pool, Y tree is E-U290. And I can tell you from experience that that is an African half the group. It is. Um, it is. It is. So that is throws interesting. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So it still doesn't mean that he does not have a tie to, you know, Thomas Jefferson's, you know, plantation, right? Because Thomas Jefferson owned a lot of enslaved people. And we know that enslaved people usually would take the surname of their former owners. Um, he still could have a tie to the actual plantation, but it's not likely that he's going to be on that Jefferson line or a Caucasian line at all. Um, okay. One of the ways that you can tell that EU290 is an African haplogroup is you can click this little yellow box right here that's the y full box, mm -hmm. and it's going to take you to this position on the Y tree.
Now, the important thing to remember is, even though it's, it's you know, seems like a, it's a number, EU290, that's mm-hmm. really just a scientific placeholder of an ancestor's name, right? So EU290 uh, represents a man who lived thousands of years ago, okay? And you can see right here in the blue that this haplogroup was formed, meaning that man uh, was born about 4,200 years ago. Okay. Okay, so his name is lost to time, right? So scientists have given him the name U290 under the E haplogroup, okay? And you can see here that any, you know, for his descendants um, that also come down from EU290, you see the little flags here? Mm -hmm. Um, You've got people from Nigeria, from Senegal, or is it Senegal or Sierra Leone? You can tap on it, Sierra Leone, um, if I stand corrected. So Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Barbados, the U.S. in New York, U.S. and Louisiana, uh, Yemen, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia. You're going to see a lot of, and even on my father's Y-DNA, we have Saudi and Qatar matches because of the, the slave trade that was going on in, in East Africa over to the Middle East. And you've got Colombia. We know that was part of the transatlantic slave trade. Nigeria. There's the East African slave trade again, Kuwait, Qatar, Nigeria, and more, right? Mm-hmm. So if you were um, to have the patrilineal line or your grandfather do further testing, um, you would get better than a prediction, right? So EU290, that is an ancestor of your grandfather on his patrilineal line. Again, somebody who lived about 4,200 years ago. Obviously, your grandfather is somebody who's lived a lot more recent than that, right? Mm -hmm, right. So what you're going to do when you do further testing, uh, say, for instance, you do the big Y testing, you're going to get a more recent ancestor, a more recent haplogroup, right? It might even be a haplogroup that originates with your grandfather or with his father or his grandfather, right? Um, And then you're going to, he's going to have a haplogroup that falls below that EU290. Um, it might even match one of the other haplogroups that's here for one of the existing test takers, or it might form its own new branch. Okay. okay. So the other nice thing about the Y full site, sorry, while I navigate around a little bit, is you see here where it's got EU290 in the gold. Yes. And it's got these white boxes above it. Mm-hmm. You can see the line of descent for that U290 ancestor. Above him, if you can see over here on the far right, is M3988. That's the ancestor for U290. Okay? Okay. The ancestor for that one is M4041. And the ancestor for that is Z1720. The ancestor for that is M4232. Okay. And you can literally go all the way back to that A0T, which is Y-DNA Adam, a, a man who lived, you know, 200 to 400,000 years ago. Okay. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Since uh, I know that I can't test my grandfather since he's deceased, mm-hmm. okay. I do have an uncle, which I don't know if he's interested. Um, okay. What, how can I use this information to compare it to other people that have been Y DNA tested? Okay. So what you can do, so like your theory for Thomas Jefferson, right? Mm -hmm. Wanting to see, does he come down from a a European um, haplogroup? And so you can, you can form theories like that. So say for instance, you have, um, you have some matches over on, ancestry DNA and mm-hmm. they're triangulating over on your grandfather's paternal side right or you have some questions because you I, I think you even mentioned that you have some people over there that you think that are on his his patrilineal line you could also mm-hmm. have them do this process right and look at to see what their haplogroup is 
Say, for instance, they come back also with the EU 290. So that basically still keeps the theory alive that they could be related to you on the patrilineal line. And more testing needs to be done. So you would need to have your uncle do uh, your, uh, I think you said your uncle or your grandfather's uncle, but you would have to have another male on that patrilineal line, do the YDNA 37 marker test and have that other person who also has the U290 um, half the group do the, the 37 marker test and see, do their markers match? If their markers match, now you've brought it down to a more recent time frame that um, says that they might match within that more recent time frame. Um, a 36 out of 37 marker match or a 37 out of 37 marker match means that there's a, a high probability of them matching within the past three to four generations. Okay. So my, my grandfather's son isn't gonna help me much. I would need somebody older. No, not necessarily. Your grandfather's son would be a good patrilineal descendant to test. Okay. Okay. He might have right. some 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 differences from your grandfather, but probably only one or two. Okay. Okay. This so is... he would be a good person to test. Um, when you do Y DNA testing, also always do autosomal DNA testing. Okay. Also, okay, so you mean on the same platform or just in general? I can pick any platform. You can pick any platform as long as you can compare okay. them. Yeah, he's already ready. tested on Ancestry. Okay. So, so I, I just have to get access to his DNA for raw data and do the same thing. Well, you don't doing. necessarily have to, to do the prediction. The prediction is going to give you pretty much the same result. Um, okay. I, would, I would go for the autosomal or the Y DNA test on family okay. tree DNA so you don't spend more money. Gotcha. Um, well, and even getting access to his raw DNA, you're not going to spend any money. Um, and it probably is going to give you the exact same result for this um, as the EU290 because that ancestor is 4,200 years old. Mm -hmm. You probably won't get any more accurate of an ancestor in more recent okay. times with, your, with his son's DNA. Um, but with the Y DNA, since your grandfather is no longer living, he would be the one to test for the 37 marker. To, and that's a starter test. And eventually you will want to work your way up to the big Y. Okay. 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 Now, let me show you another new tool. Um, well, can I ask you a question first before we go sure. on? So, sure. So, so... Is this like saved on the side or do you have to upload every time to get this information? Oh yeah, so, so even though you have uploaded your, the, you know, his DNA here and have you gotten mm -hmm. this, uh, this YFOL link right here, mm -hmm. you can actually just go ahead and bookmark this site. So I've just marked it in my favorites and just bookmarked it. And if you'll notice, it actually gives you the web address of yfol.com forward slash tree forward slash EU290. Got you. Okay. And another thing that you can do when you just go to the, you know, you can just Google the YFOL, Y tree, mm -hmm. and then just click on search. And you can search for any haplogroup. group. And you're going to not want to put the, the first letter. So you're just going to search for U290. And then it's going to show you E-U290. And then you click the little green and it takes you right to it. So this is a public Y-DNA tree and you can access any of these haplogroups groups at any time. Okay. Okay. This another is cool. neat tool. Yeah. Another little neat tool that I'll show you here is this third icon, which is the little globe icon. Mm -hmm. And this is going to show you the theoretical migrations for U290. Let me scroll up here and I'll let it refresh. Zoom out a little bit so you can see where all of it goes. So you can see how it started over in East Africa, migrated over to West Africa. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And it'll stop around that 4200 or 2200 BC which I, is about 4,200 years ago. So now when you get the big Y, 
it's going to show you more migrations to more recent times. And those more recent times are going to be based on the, um, the origins that people have self um, have, have actually included there on the Y full tree. Mm -hmm. um, so people over in the Middle East, like how my father has to match this over in the Middle East, it might stop over there in the Middle East. Um, once it updates to, to say, for instance, if you test it or if you have your grandfather's son test and you have the origins over in the U.S., it might jump, jump over to the U.S. and show that theoretical migration over the, to the U.S. Um, the reason why it's going to do that is because it's pointing to you the origins that either you've specified or other users have specified. Um, as more people test, um, there are several Africans, you know, um, EU290 is a very popular haplogroup. group. Um, it's, I believe, one of the, one of the top haplogroups groups of Black American men and Africans. So as more people test and put their locations for their ancestors' origins, you'll get a more recent migration map throughout Africa over to the U.S. and over to other areas, other countries where the transatlantic slave trade happened. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this other tool here, uh, this is a, a newer tool called discover.familytree.com. Uh, and you can come in here and you will plug in the full HAPA group. So that E, where is my dash? Dash. U290. You can click show my report. It's gonna ask you some questions. Do not refresh. I'm just gonna put in my email address. I'm gonna say, no, I'm not a Family Tree DNA customer, even though I am. Um, but just to show folks that they can get it without being a family tree DNA customer and just click view my now, report. Is it, is it asking if your if file is just uploaded over there for your actual customer? Um, both, because you're a customer for both. If you've got okay. your stuff uploaded over there or um, if you're if you've bought a test with them. Okay. Um, yep. So but you can see that you can use this without even having either. Right without having a test over there and without having uploaded there. Um, so you don't even need to be a customer to use this report. So it gives you a haplogroup report for EU290. It shows you that line of descent from an, an older ancestor um, who is CTS2504, right? Mm -hmm. And it shows that that ancestor, so they've actually, so the timelines are gonna differ from site to site, right? This is all, the, the timelines are still theoretical and still being ironed out. So family tree DNA, their Y DNA tree is saying that CTS 2504 was an ancestor who lived roughly 4,100 years ago and that U290 lived roughly 4,000 years ago. And so you can see their timing over here on a paragraph, the EU290 story. The mm -hmm. half group EU290 represents a man who's estimated to have been born around 4,000 years ago and then they say plus or minus 650 years, okay? That corresponds with the time, um, a year date of 2000 BCE with a 95% probability that he was born between 2642 and 1400 BCE. So this is an ancient ancestor we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so his paternal line was formed when it branched off from CTS 2504 and the rest of mankind roughly 4,100 years ago, plus or minus 650 years. So again, to go back to that, those theories that you can form when looking at other matches on Ancestry, if you have an ancestor, if you have a, a DNA match over there and you guys, you know, he's got the Jefferson surname or he descends somebody from somebody with the Jefferson surname, right? Um, and you're trying to figure out for your grandfather's or your great, great, great grandfather's brothers, right? Mm -hmm. you, can have, you can form that theory that, hey, they lived in the same proximity. They had the same surname. We share autosomal DNA. Let's see if it's on the patrilineal line, right? 
Did they have the same father? Uh, maybe they even lived next door to each other on census records in like 1870, right? Um, if, if he uploads his ATDNA and his haplogroup is thousands of years different from your haplogroup, you know, your grandfather's patrilineal haplogroup, you can cross that theory off because they don't share the same father. So okay. I did that with a, uh, an example of mine is my two times great grandfather, Charlton Morrison. Um, I, had, um, I had somebody else test on YDNA who I thought that, hey, do they have the same parents, right? Um, they, their haplogroups did not match within thousands of years of each other. Yeah, I can't bring up a good example right now. Okay, no worries. Okay, let me pop back over here. But this, this family tree DNA report does contain a lot of, um, a lot of data. Again, this is all going to be about the family tree DNA website. So it won't include any of the data that's over there on WIFL. Um, but you can see that EU290 descendants have 49 testers over on the family tree DNA site from Ghana, 27 from Saudi Arabia, 32 from the US, and 21 from other countries that are listed. This, what else you, you can discover is basically their selling point for their test, right. which I do suggest at least starting out with the 37 marker Y-DNA test. You can see, so that was a haplogroup group story that we were on. You have a little menu here on the left. You can go to country frequency and see where all, you know, um, those countries are specified that the test takers are from. Mm -hmm. Notable connections is neat. So EU290 is also an ancestor for Desmond Tutu. It doesn't mean that you're directly connected to his line, but it means that 4,000 years ago, Desmond Tutu and your patrilineal line shared a same ancient ancestor. Gotcha. Um, you've got all these other ones as well. John Bunch. Here's an artist, somebody who's living today, Nelson Mandela. So his line. Oh. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, what is this, Napoleon thrown in it? I mean, like, what does this mean? He's mm -hmm. of African descent. So he does have an African half a group, which is EM34. Now, remember everybody's out of Africa, right? Okay. So his, his haplogroup, his African haplogroup actually left Africa or was his ancient haplogroup was around from 38,000 years ago. So, so yeah, so I don't know what his more modern haplogroup is. It doesn't show it here. It just shows his P177 ancestor. That's a common ancestor for your, patri your grandfather's patrilineal line and his patrilineal line is somebody who lived roughly 40,000 years ago. So we're talking a very ancient ancestor. Gotcha. Okay. And again, mind you, everybody, everybody's haplogroups come out of Africa, right? Why DNA, Adam, everybody descends from them. So you're going to see that. So Albert Perry is a good example. <laughs> so this is how these people are building these crazy trees. I, I, it's making more sense. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so you can see here, 234,000 years ago, somebody could put that, you know, PR2921 in their tree. They're going to have a lot of gaps between that ancestor and their line, right? Because that's over mm -hmm. 200,000 years ago. That's thousands upon thousands of generations of ancestors that you would have to have that none of us are ever going to be able to identify, right? Because these mm -hmm. are our ancestors who lived so long ago. We don't know their names. We don't know where they lived at in the world. Um, we have the theoretical ideas of where they lived in the world, where their migrations were, you know, in Africa, leaving Africa and then migrating throughout the rest of the world. And more of that is going to be filled in once more people do Y-DNA testing. Okay. So, so I kind of, I love the fact that they're providing this free tool, right? Um, but then it gets kind of confusing because they're showing you connections to ancient ancestors as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope that they're doing a good job and that people are understanding, you know, yeah, this is somebody 234,000 years ago, this common ancestor. 
Um, it also gives you a migration map. It does look quite a bit different than that theoretical migration, but you can basically see, you know, from Y Adam all the way to your group that, you know, the EM2 is an ancestor of the U290. Um, this one I think is pretty neat. This is the connection to uh, basically archeological sites. So um, a lot of these are sites where they are identifying bones of, of ancient people and doing DNA testing and allowing others to see how they connect to them. So you and Kendoki too, uh, your patrilineal line, they share that common ancestor roughly 4,000 years ago. And then they also provide information on the mtDNA haplogroups. And then there, of course, there's several other things here as well. Um, it gives you suggested projects that if you do a Y DNA test, that you should think about joining the, no, did not mean to click it, the E1B1A M2 project. Um, the Arabs are big on testing. <laughs> As you can see here, there's a lot of Arab groups and a mm -hmm. lot of them do have um, um, African haplogroups. There's some raging debate going on in some of the, the EM2 groups right now in the E1B1A groups. Some Arabs, because they have done a lot more extensive testing than black Americans have or Africans have, are trying to claim that the African haplogroup um, E and EM2 originates actually in the Middle East and not in Africa. Um, but what they're missing is that we haven't yet tested at the same level that they're testing. Mm -hmm. um, they're also forgetting the East African slave trade as well and how many East Africans were actually funneled into the Middle East, you know, thousands of years ago um, before the transatlantic slave trade. So they're missing that that point, that key point as well. And then also the just migrations from Africa over into the Middle East. Okay. And then you've got some scientific de details, which I really don't delve into. I don't even like, the, you know, when I get sometimes with these charts and stuff, I'm like, ooh. Yeah. And then of course the discover more is, is selling you the test. But these, the haplogroup story um, the notable connections, especially when you can find, you know, those ancestors, those connections to like 4,000 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I would definitely say, you know, take screenshots of all this and create a report that you can share with your family. Take that to your grandfather's yeah. son and show him this is your haplogroup, you know, we want to find out more. And then of course, this is the next step to do a YDNA 37 marker test. So the, the information, what we're doing right now, it's gonna be recorded and it's gonna be presented um, in some form or fashion or what are we yes. actually, okay. So I can, yes. I can definitely share this conversation and whatever is being presented at some Absolutely. point. Okay. Absolutely. So I'll actually put it out on my YouTube channel if that's okay. Yeah, that's um, fine. Okay, and then that way, um, Spencer can share it with the clubhouse group so that they can learn how to do their own, right? Um, I need to pull up that example. And if I get a chance today, I'll pull up that example of um, the theory that I was working on for my own two times great grandfather um, and why those haplogroups groups are not a match for each other and show that using the y fold tree because that's something that, and I was actually kind of disappointed um, because I was really hoping that there, there are Y DNA markers and haplogroups would match, that I mm -hmm. could finally confirm that this is how they're connected, right? Um, that I've found, you know, at least a brother of my two times great grandfather, even if I haven't identified who his father was, right? right. Um, so we did the autosomal testing on him um, on the other cousin match, and we did the Y DNA testing. And of course, autosomally, he matches. Um, but they weren't a match on Y-DNA, um, either on the haplogroup or the markers. And before his Y-DNA test came in, I was able to tell that they weren't going to match because the haplogroups didn't match. Um, and I just remember being really disappointed um, because it was a theory 
one that's been in the works for, I mean, I've been working on it since 2014. Um, and I was hoping to get, you know, an answer. I was hoping to get them to match, right? right. And that I was gonna identify that they were brothers, they shared the same father. Um, so I had to go through that disappointment of, they're not a match. They're not brothers. And feeling like I'm back at square one and still trying to identify how they're connected, right? Mm -hmm. But I also had to realize that, you know what? They're not a match. I can cross off that, that part of the theory that they're connected to a father. Um, and it's literally that's how we're just going to have to whittle down these matches um, that we're going to so, have to. to... So they could potentially be connected through a female. Is that what you're yes. implying? Yes. Okay. They so could be maybe connected I through a female. move this Thomas Jefferson line down to a female line. Mm -hmm. And because the DNA matches are there. I okay. just don't know. I just play, put them in place order based on the last name. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. So. Okay. So it's one, it's one branch because we're dealing with the patrilineal line of descent, right? From father right. to son, we know that if it's not a match that we can cross off certain things, right? right. But then we can, we can look elsewhere in the tree for those connections. Um, so even though it might be disappointing sometimes, um, especially in this infancy of uh, all of us doing the YDNA test, sometimes we're not going to have any matches, right? Like I right. just had a cousin who I recruited to, to do the YDNA test for his father's line, which is totally unrelated to me. But because I know how beneficial YDNA testing is, I'm just like, every, everybody needs to test a patrilineal line, right? And two or three people in that patrilineal line at, at the very least, right? Because number one, we're all going to find matches that way, right? Um, they may not match me on my, uh, my patrilineal line, but they're gonna match others. So it's going to fill in the Y-DNA tree better. It's gonna help us better understand the migrations of our enslaved ancestors on this, in this country, right? Um, it's going to rule out other you know, theories that we can establish. Um, and even if people don't come back with matches right now today, doesn't mean that they're not going to have matches down the line. They will have matches down the line. Um, so for instance, his results just came back. He doesn't have any matches, but he's got all this great information, right? We know that he doesn't have any matches on YDNA. So even no matches is a bit of information. He needs to go out to his autosomal matches and recruit YDNA test takers because it's him not having matches doesn't mean matches aren't out there. It just means that they haven't tested. But then since he's doing autosomal DNA, he's also going to be able to get information about his, his more recent um, ancestry, even though they might be ancient, around 4,000 to 10,000 years old. Um, and then he'll be able to use that piece of information to confirm whether he might connect to other people who've also done autosomal DNA testing. Okay. 